What is up, everybody, and welcome back to part two of a three-part series of me positively reviewing April Wilkerson's videos on how she builds a board-on-board -board fence. If you missed the first part, go back and watch it first, or a lot of this probably won't make sense. If you have watched it, let's get into it. All right, so we're starting part two of the three-part series. Uh, now, we saw in the first part, she's already off to a great start. Uh, the posts were already done originally, but she's went ahead and added on the additional height that she'll need uh, to complete the fence. She's already got her rails run. I remember at the end of the first video, uh, she already she already had the top trim done on some of it too. Okay, so at the end of part one of redoing the fence, I extended the poles, demoed the old fence, and also laid down the stringers. So now I'm going to get started with actually laying down the pickets for the board on board fence. Let's go. Actually, the first thing I started with was laying down a top cap. This isn't absolutely required. I just think it looks nice. I like this. Uh, I like this sawhorse. So it's going to keep that two by four locked exactly where it needs to be. And I like the foot pedal uh, that actually tightens and locks it in place. That is slick. I'm using a pre-stained cedar two by six for my top cap. And I used my multi-scan and super jaws to hold it in place while I use the circular saw to cut a 45 on the end. The 45 degree here is not necessary. It's just, again, something I thought would look nice. Now this was one advantage of going with a local supplier for material versus the big box store, is I was able to get these two by sixes and 16 foot joints. Now the top cap does not sit center on the two by four, but instead I left a two and a half inch overhang on the front because later I'm gonna be placing two pickets and trim on the front edge and I still wanted a slight overhang. Once the board was set in place, I came back with nails and secured it to that two by four. Actually, I started off using nails, but then later I ended up switching to screws to secure the top cap. And to make this step easier, I ended up cutting a block that was two and a half inches to use as a spacer. So I could just set it in. Yeah, so we use jigs as much as possible when we're building a fence. It allows, obviously allows for increased efficiency, but also makes sure that everything matches you know, from the very first foot to the very last foot of the fence. Uh, it's a nice little trick she's got making a jig there. Place and move the material where it needed to go. And whenever I got in between poles, I would actually have Cody move the two by four. It was far easier than trying to constantly move around the top two by six. And the reason I am putting on the top cap first thing so that I could very quickly lay all the pickets by just butting up the top of the picket. Yeah, by setting her top cap first, she saved herself quite a lot of time uh, setting the height of each picket. You know, a lot of times we'll run a jig across the top of the pickets just to make sure that each picket is set at the same height as the other ones. Uh, but there's a fair amount of time that goes into laying out that top two by four, making sure that your top is set just exactly right. So she's she's saved herself quite a bit of time, and she's going to have to do it anyway. Uh, so doing it first is uh, incredibly efficient. The underside of that top cap. And, and that's exactly what I did next. I started laying down my picket. So one thing I'll also notice, she's made herself another jig to properly space each picket. Uh, something that we do, we use, we use all sorts of jigs. And so I like that she's doing this. It's gonna make the whole fence look uniform and it's gonna save her quite a bit of time as well. Now I am going with a board on board fence. So the first thing I did was make a spacer that was three inches wide. My pickets are five and a half inches wide. So this roughly leaves just over an inch on either side so that as the boards shrink, it won't create a gap where you can see in the yard. So that's a great tip. Uh, regardless of what size boards you use, you know, here in our region, so five and a half is pretty common. There's also some seven and a half inch boards uh, in and out of the market. We've used them a lot in the past. They're not really available right now. Um, but that one inch overhang on each side is exactly what she said. It, if those boards shrink, it's not going to let you see through the board. It's still going to give you a little bit of overlap, but still let the air through. So one inch, regardless of what size your picket is, a one inch, one inch gap on or one inch overlay on each side is exactly right. That's exactly why we're going with board on board is to create that additional level of privacy. I would first lay down the back row of pickets by butting my spacer against the previous picket, then placing my new picket that I'll be laying down against the spacer, then using two nails per stringer to attach it. And then just about every fifth or sixth picket, I would hold up a level and just make sure that I wasn't getting out of plumb. So April's obviously done this quite a bit, it seems like. Uh, so she's doing it, she's leveling every, or plumbing really, every fifth or sixth picket. Um, if for the DIY crowd, if you haven't done this very much, I would probably level 
every picket for the first 50 or so, then every two pickets, just as you become comfortable with knowing kind of where the level of the pickets is. If you're just starting out and you only level every five or six pickets, you can really get off in the span of five or six pickets. So I would recommend leveling each picket, and then as you get comfortable with that, every couple pickets, then every three, four, etc. And if I was, then I would scotch over this picket slightly until I was back in plumb, then secure it with two nails. Now, it is the heat of summer in Texas, so I definitely utilize this canopy. We would make it straddle the fence and move it over to the area where I was working. Believe me, it was still hot, but at least that sun wasn't beating down on me the whole time. So after getting quite a few of the back pickets laid, I would double back and start laying down the front pickets, repeating the exact same process. Using the spacer to butt up against the previous picket and then laying down my new picket up against the spacer. Yeah, because she's already done her, her math on exactly what that one inch overhang is on the base pickets, then the top picket, she can use the same spacer and it'll all come out exactly right. She won't have to try to you know, measure. She won't have to try to eyeball exactly where center is when she's laying those boards. Using the same spacer saves an incredible amount of time. Now, just something that I did is I wanted my spacer to be the full length from the top to the bottom of the fence. So I grabbed a picket and ripped it down at my table saw. And then to make handling it easier, well, I attached a handle to it. So what's funny is uh, when I originally read the title Board on Board, so here in the Midwest, um, for for us, I mean, this would be a board on board fence, but what I originally had pictured uh, was a shadow box fence. Uh, so with boards alternating on either side, that's also here in the Midwest. It's also called a board on board or a neighbor friendly fence. Um, so so when I said earlier that it would allow more airflow through, obviously this will not let any air through, uh, but it will allow for some incredible privacy because those boards are going to shrink as they dry up. Um, I like this cell a lot. It would take me a, pretty much a full day to pick it one side. So just in picketing alone, it was three days worth of work. Now I'm using stainless steel ring shank nails and the stainless steel nails are a lot more expensive than the regular nails. However, the coating will prevent them from leaving those black streaks down the pickets over time. She's not kidding when she says they're more expensive. Uh, they, are, they, they are a longer lasting nail, uh, but in our experience, so a box of galvanized ring shank nails is runs about $40 for 3,600 of them. And we priced out stainless steel nails and it's about $170 uh, for that same 3,600. So we offer it as an upgraded option, uh, but not a lot of customers uh, take us up on that simply because it adds quite a bit of cost to the fence. But it's absolutely the right way to go. I mean, stainless steel will last forever. And the ring shank will keep them from backing out. So since we're already spending a lot of money on the fence, we went ahead and spent the extra buck to get the stainless steel ones. And of course, after I got done with one side, I would just wrap around and continue on with the next. So if you're mindful about where you place your nails, if you go within an inch of the outside of the picket, whenever you come back with your overlay board, you'll actually cover them up. So the only thing I would worry about, I absolutely understand the concept of keeping as many nails covered as possible just to keep them out of sight, out of mind sort of thing. The only thing I would worry about is being that close to the edge. Uh, maybe they split over time. There's just not a lot of support on the edge of that board. Um, but, I mean, it's a cedar and it's pre-stained, so it's going to be a strong board anyway. Uh, that would just probably be my only feedback here. And I'm not saying it will. I'm just saying it, it has the possibility over time of splitting out. It was really cool because Cody and a neighbor friend ended up working ahead of me to lay down the top cap so as soon as I was done with the second side, I could just continue on with the third. Then finally, after three long days of picketing, I got to the very end. And I guess it doesn't pay to be a neighbor friend of ours because they end up stopping by and we put a tool in your hand. <laughs> you gotta love good neighbors. Okay, now on to a very quick and simple step, adding the trim. Once all the pickets were up, I grabbed some 1x3 boards, went to the outside of the fence, and placed them along the top. This hides all of the dog ears and just gives it a real uniform look in my opinion. This is by far the quickest step involved in the entire project. Okay, and that's actually where I'm gonna have to stop this time. I had hoped to get the boxes done for this video, but I'm just gonna have to push it until the next video. So next time I will be doing the boxes around the post, the trim work for the boxes, as well as uh, building a gate. 
Now, if you have any questions about the material that I'm using, where I purchased it, or any of the, the tools that I'm using, be sure to check the description of the video first because I have left you links. And I have also written a, a pretty thorough written tutorial. So if you have more questions that I didn't answer in the video, then also check that link in the description below. Uh, that's it for this one. So I will see you next time. You know, that's, uh, so that's a wrap on the second video. All in all, I mean, she's done a great job. I also want to say the stain color on this fence, I like it a lot. Um, sometimes you'll see them be a little bit more red uh, than this. And I like this natural, it's uh, it's kind of a dark cedar. You know, so it's what we would call probably like a chestnut, maybe. It looks really nice. I mean, all together, I mean, April's off to an incredible start. Um, I like, I really like the way she's putting this together. I like the detail of cutting the top trim at 45 degrees. It's, it's a step that probably didn't take that much longer to get done, but it's a nice finish. It looks really nice. Obviously, looks custom. It's going to let those boards kind of support themselves over time as they want to try to move. Um, yeah, April's off to a great start. You know, guys, if, if you haven't found April's channel, I would probably recommend going and checking her channel out. I'll be doing that after this video just because it seems like she's doing some really good things, and she really thinks things through very well. So... Stay tuned. We've got a third part coming. She's got a last uh, last video in her three-part series, so we'll be doing a review of the last uh, video in her series. But for now, I'm Joe Evers, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors.